what happens is that your game is going to crash and this will usually happen between anything between 20 minutes to 30 minutes or possibly 45 minutes to an hour depending on if you're using an SOC from MediaTek or from Qualcomm or from Exynos. Hello and welcome to another video. As usual, my name is Jeffrey and you're welcome to the Inquisitive Universe. How are you? Long time no see. I hope you're good. I hope everything is well. How are you surviving in this economy? Right. Okay, so today I want to talk about Nintendo Switch emulation. And I think I have covered a fair bit on my channel. You may want to go check it out. But I think I keep getting these questions over and over and I don't think I've seen anybody address it. So that's why I want to address it. Uh, one of the questions I got was, um, Jeff, I have the same phone as you do. That's the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 powered Poco F5, 8 gigs of RAM, sometimes even 12 gigs of RAM. And, you know, when I'm trying to play emulated games like Yuzu or Skyline on my smartphone, it just crashes for no reason. Why is that? What can I do? And, you know, like, I see you, you're playing Breath of the Wild, you know, you talked about it being 30 FPS on your website. And I'm, I can't, I can't get 30 FPS. I can't, you know, I'm struggling. Anytime I try to do it, it just goes off. Like, what do I do? So that's why I'm here uh, to explain stuff. I think, I, I, don't, I don't think I did a good job of explaining it on the other videos that I have done specifically for Yuzu because Yuzu is very tasking. And so that's why I want to like explain it right now so if you're going to be playing um games on your hardware it doesn't really matter if it's anything between so long as you've got uh, anything between snapdragon 855 all the way up to snapdragon 8 gen 3 you're good right if you've got anything lower then you may want to stick with 2d games so if you're going to be sticking with 2d games ahead then it would probably run on your phone but I think you're also, also, you're also going to need to follow this fol the following steps that I'm going to put out because it's mostly it's the same thing that's going to happen because when I had, um, uh, I had a Redmi Note 9 Pro previously and I was playing 2D games like uh, Undead Horde 2 and great game, 2D game, but, but my phone would get really hot, like super hot and performance would take a nosedive and then, you know, it would crash. And, you know, with the Snapdragon 720G slash 732G type of phones, you know, same thing can also be said for phones around that same performance range, like the Helio G, uh, 95, G96, G99, for example, possibly even Dimensity 6080. I think they all have, since they all have the same performance, um, they're all within the same performance range, they're also going to be running into the same type of problems as well. So I think even if you play only 2D games, you may need to take, uh, you may need to pay attention to take advantage of this one. So it's not just people playing, who are playing Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. It also applies to you too. So let's continue. Now, one of the very first things you need to know about, um, especially Nintendo Switch emulation, which I'm going to be focusing on, but it also applies to other types of emulation as well that are demanding, is that these ones, they would push your CPU to the max. They will take it as far as it can go. So when they are pushing it to the max, what happens when the smartphone SOC is, is actually starting, this, especially the CPU cores, when they, are, when they are being pushed to breaking point, when they are being pushed to the highest level that they can perform, it starts to heat up. Heat is generated within the SOC. So as it gets to a certain temperature, what happens is that the SOC has, you know, self-protective measures. We mostly call it throttling generally that says um, warning, 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 thermal threshold reached, thermal threshold reached. So the CPU is going to throttle its own performance just to make the temperature come down. So with the CPU choking itself, in order to bring the performance and the temperature down, you are going to see a serious drop in performance now depending on the soc that you use some socs have like you know this slide of you know like when performance starts to throttle and comes down some socs have this slide that comes down others have this sheer clip drop that just goes whew, all the way down but regardless of whether it slides down or it falls into the ocean 
what happens is that your game is going to crash and this will usually happen between anything between 20 minutes to 30 minutes or possibly 45 minutes to an hour depending on if you're using an SOC from MediaTek or from Qualcomm or from Exynos and it also matters uh, the amount of RAM that you have and you know the optimization of your software so that is what you should know this is usually the main reason temperature and heating makes it drop off and then the second one is that when you're playing these emulated games these games are not meant for android so there's a lot of compilation going on in the back compilation of game libraries and you know trees and buildings and rocks especially for huge 3d games like breath of the wild for example there's a whole last compilation going on in the background so as this compilation is going on these things are being saved to your ram after a certain period of time your ram is going to be full and then the game cannot continue anymore because there's really as the as stuff are getting into the ram the ram isn't really clearing them out because it feels like it still needs them so long as the game is still running so it gets to a certain point the ram gets choked up and then the game cannot continue and then boom that's that it's over the game is going to crash so that's the second reason so what can you do now to improve um what can you do now to play longer or to be able to play these games as i play them or if you don't want to play the ones i'm playing if you can only play 2d games how can you play longer and how can you protect your phone because this constant heating is bad for your phone if nobody's going to tell you that i will tell you that this constant heating is bad for your phone so the economy that's currently available to us right now is should possibly be a good warning to tell you do not melt your motherboard so the first thing you're going to want to tackle is the heating very very important that's the first thing you're going to want to tackle my gaming performance on yuzu got better when i simply got a gaming fan i think it should be around here somewhere so i i got this one very 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 nice one um hold on again yeah so i've gotten a cable i don't know if you can see this but this is a gaming fan i don't know can you hear it yeah so one of the very first things that you need to do is to get yourself one of those cooling fans very very important and strap it to the back of your phone especially close to the battery especially close to the battery you can strap it close to the soc but i don't know I, I keep mine close to the battery because most of the time it's the battery temperature the soc can work fine but most of the time it's the battery temperature that you need to be worried about because if the battery goes hey, why are <laughs> OEM, you know, we call it in Nigeria, we call it Folucon battery, but OEM battery is actually very difficult to replace because there's so many fakes on the market, so you need to protect your battery. Get a cooling fan, strap it to the back of your phone or anywhere between the SOC and the battery, somewhere, a very sweet middle point that you can be able to cool both at the same time. And that would see your gaming performance go up. It will go, it's going to stay at a very, very acceptable level of performance for longer. So that's the very first thing you want to do. Get a cooling fan. I am begging you on, for the sake of your phone, on behalf of your phone, get a cooling fan. They are actually very cheap. You can find one if you're a Nigerian, you can find one for less than 10K. You could even find one for 5K, Seth, if you are lucky, but I would say less than 10K to adjust for inflation. If you live outside, I think you're, going, you're mostly going to find them for less than $15 USD. So you can convert in your own currency less 10 to 15 usd depends if you check aliexpress i'm sure you'd find something so that's the very first thing you want to do the second thing you want to do is update yuzu update yuzu make sure that you are on the latest play store version or the latest github version depending on wherever you're comfortable with personally i use the play store version i can't really be bothered with github especially now that uh, i think today is on the uh, 4th of march 2024 and github is dealing with a hacker problem where there's some you know malicious code on their website so i don't want any of that heat so i'm going to stay on play store where it's relatively safe okay so get the latest version and then use that one and then another thing you're also going to want to do as well too as well is that 
you should make sure most of the games on 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 the switch have updates they are regularly updated if they are supported by their developer download the updates and when i when i got breath of the wild uh, from the developer when i got it the version 1.6.0 the update version 1.6.0 when i got that one it was my gaming performance was miles better compared to what i was suffering with under the 1.0.0 okay there are also mods that will allow you to play 30 fps and you know stuff like that you could also get those too not promoting piracy but do you okay just do you um <clears throat> that's that and then the next thing you want to do finally if you can get the up uh, keep your your user updated and then keep your uh your game files updated as well the next thing you want to do is some of these are marginal, so you may you may choose to accept it, you may choose not to. But first off, make sure you clear, especially if you use an 8 gig RAM device like I do, uh, or a 12 gig RAM device. I think people with 16 gig RAM device don't really need to bother. But make sure you clear out your RAM, like you know, take all the apps out before you start playing Yuzu. That's the very first thing you need to do, very important before you start playing. Clear everything out, make sure that the space you've got is for use it to run and then keep it in mind that you should not have gaming sessions of more than 45 to an hour 45 minutes an hour for your ram because your ram is obviously going to get filled up and when it gets filled up the game is going to lag and then crash and then also for the longevity of your smartphone to make sure you charge up to 80 percent before you start gaming very important make sure you charge up to about 80 85 percent before you start gaming so that one is also another thing that you may want to do and then finally there's also something an advice that somebody has um given to me and it's like you should go airplane mode just go airplane mode and turn off your network that the power that will be routed to the modems would be better kept or better served for gaming i don't know if it's just a placebo or not but it it helps me a bit and also it helps that nobody no calls come in when i'm gaming so it also keeps me focused and stuff like that i don't know but that's that's mostly it that's how i enjoy yuzu and that's how i've been able to enjoy it for the past i don't know six eight months thereabouts depends so yeah with that we've come to the end of this video if you want to see my settings uh you should probably go get on google or any search engine and type how to play legend of zelda breath of the wild on android and you'll see my youtube and uh, my user settings not youtube my user settings you see it down there as well so with that we've come to the end of this video thank you very much for coming uh please make sure to like share and subscribe make sure to like share and subscribe it's stuff like that that helps small channels like mine grow and i guess i'll see you in the next one Bye-bye.